An electrical worker contacts an energized conductor and can't let go. A construction worker grasps a damaged extension cord and is unable to release it. A shop worker inadvertently touches an exposed wire and her grip contracts involuntarily. In each of these instances and in many similar incidents each year, people who receive an electric shock are unable to release themselves from contact with an energized conductor or circuit part. And without immediate assistance gaining release, incidents like these are likely to prove fatal. In this program, we will explain why this happens and examine the effects of electric current on the human body. Most importantly, we will teach how a victim of electric shock can safely be released from the grip of an energized circuit. Commonly referred to as contact release, learning this critical skill is important for electrical workers, their co-workers, and any potential first responders. Okay. This is why the NFPA 70E requires that all workers who may be exposed to electric shock receive annual contact release training, as well as those who are responsible for responding to a shock event. The NFPA 70E is a safety standard published by the National Fire Protection Association and is widely considered to be the leading authority for electrical safety in the workplace. In order for electricity to perform useful work, it must travel through a conductor, like this one. The flow of electricity through a conductor is referred to as electric current, and its unit of measure is the ampere, commonly called an amp. There are a variety of materials that make good conductors. Aluminum, copper, steel, and other metals make excellent conductors of electricity. Another good conductor of electricity is water. Electric current can easily flow through water, as well as anything that has become wet or damp. This is why we are so vulnerable to being shocked. The human body is largely made up of water and can easily become a conductor of electricity.